to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, April 10th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Well, Speaker John Boehner unloaded on the White House today for their failure to tell the American people the truth about, well, anything. The frustration is, is that the American people have not been told the truth about what happened at the IRS. The American people have not been told the truth about what happened in Fast and Furious. The administration has not told the American people the truth about Benghazi. And we've been going through all of these hearings, having to hold people in contempt because they've made it impossible to get to the documents. They've not been forthcoming. They owe the American people the truth. And when it comes to Benghazi, we've got four Americans who are dead, and their families deserve the truth about what happened, and the administration refuses to tell them the truth. Now, Boehner's comments come on the heels of the House Ways and Means Committee voting to hold Lois Lerner in contempt of Congress. Now, Lerner is accused of leading an effort to target the tax status of conservative organizations while giving liberal organizations a pass. Committee Republicans aren't ruling out the use of the chamber's inherent contempt authority, meaning if Lois Lerner continues to refuse to testify, then the House could throw her in jail until January 2015, when a new Congress is seated, which could then issue another subpoena to throw her in jail again if she refuses to testify. So the question is now, will the Attorney General conduct a thorough investigation? But considering the fact that Lerner is facing jail time rather than talking, I would venture to say that there are some higher-ups in this administration who would be gravely harmed with a thorough investigation. So like I said before, earlier in the week, Congress's only option is to jail the criminals. That's what they do to the regular average person. Um, but rather than go after the criminal elements within our own government, the government has once again sent its goons to come after citizens. Now, we've been covering the story of Cliven Bundy. He's been the last rancher standing in a showdown in Nevada, uh, engaged in this showdown with federal agents. Well, during a confrontation yesterday, Bureau of Land Management agents assaulted a 57-year-old cancer victim, set a dog on a pregnant woman, and tasered Ammon Bundy. Now, the BLM claims that they were responding to one of their trucks being struck by a protester during an earlier incident. Isn't that funny? They, they're upset about their property rights being violated. Meanwhile, they're violating the property rights of the citizens there of Nevada. Now, protesters claimed that the agents were there to punish them for daring to violate a First Amendment area set up by the feds, outside of which free speech is banned. Now, because of the fact that the situation there has escalated rather quickly, we sent David Knight to give us continued coverage of everything that's going on there at Bundy's Ranch in Nevada. But Ammon Bundy, who's the son of Cliven Bundy, told David Knight today that around 20 cowboys went on land that had been claimed by the U.S. Bureau of Land Management and retrieved 30 head of cattle. He said, we did have a small confrontation with them, but they didn't have the forces to do a whole lot. They couldn't mobilize fast enough, and we were able to gather those cattle and get them to the ranch. So this is Ammon Bundy, who was tasered and put in jail, and like a true cowboy, he went the next day, wasn't afraid, and just got his cattle back. Uh, not all of them, of course, but about 30 head of cattle. Now, the BLM is currently rounding up Bundy's cattle in order to enforce a regulation in order to protect an endangered desert tortoise after 600,000 acres of public land was reclassified as federal property, which, as we know, is a farce. Now, Cliven Bundy has called on the Clark County Sheriff there, Douglas Gillespie, to start arresting Bureau of Land Management agents and charging them with trespassing and theft. We elected him, and we paid him. We pay him. What did we pay him to do? Don't we pay him to protect our life, liberty, and property? Yeah. Bundy noted that his life was under threat because he couldn't get a response from a 911 call. The sheriff's office has stayed out of it and is turning all calls over to the BLM. So it seems to me like the county needs to be issuing a recall. The sheriff has obviously taken sides with the federal government. Now I'm going to be speaking with David Knight a little bit later in the show. But perhaps because this story is gaining national attention, it's finally going to give pause to the citizens of this country who can finally see the response 
that the federal government is going to have if anyone tries to stop their Agenda 21 plans. I mean, this is the full-on rollout of Agenda 21 right before our eyes. And here, you know, perhaps in Washington, Iowa, a town of 7,000 residents, their town has just received a new war tank. Why do they need this tank to police a town of 7,000 people? They should sound the alarm when their local police have just received a war machine to police their streets. It's an MRAP. It's a machine that's designed to withstand landmines and IEDs in Afghanistan and Iraq. Now, why would they need this? Well, the excuses given by police uh, is that they need the machine for school shootings and terrorist attacks. So, of course, this is just typical Washington war machine rhetoric, you know, school shootings, terrorist attacks. We need to arm all of the local police departments, even if it's only a very small town in Iowa of 7,000 people. But as we can see with what's happening in Nevada, it's not for terrorists. It's for turning on the citizens if they don't decide to play along with what the federal government has in mind for the states. And that's exactly why the TSA never actually catches any terrorists, because they're not there to catch the terrorists. They're to, they're, their job is to abuse citizens. And once again, this time TSA has harassed a stroke victim, Heidi Wright, who was attempting to fly with her sister. But when screeners saw an expired driver's license, they leapt into terror training mode. Now Wright, who suffered a stroke 10 years ago and has been left disabled, is unable to talk to her own family. But this didn't stop TSA screeners from demanding that she say her own name in order to board a flight. Her sister said she was just standing there in tears, thinking, we can't even get her to talk to us. Are you serious? Eventually, the TSA forced the sisters to take an eight-hour bus ride in order to reach their destination. And, of course, rather than apologize, a TSA spokesperson said, I think it could have been handled differently by the TSA, and it probably could have been handled differently by the family. And hopefully, moving forward, they won't have this problem again because they know about the programs that we have in place. And hopefully, like the rest of the automated jobs out there, the TSA will be replaced by malfunctioning robots. Kind of like this new drone that, that they have come up with. This drone is capable of perching on power lines. It never once has to touch the ground. It can just perch on the power lines like a bird to recharge its batteries. Isn't it wonderful to know that all the brightest minds in our society are using those bright minds for the betterment of mankind? Now, Obama, his lord and majesty, was in Austin earlier today. He was speaking at the Civil Rights Summit. It was an event to honor LBJ's signing of the Civil Rights Act. Well, coming up, Jakari Jackson will report on just how far we've come. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce.
sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates we have a discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Jackson for InfoWars.com. I'm here at the Civil Rights Summit here in Austin, Texas. As you can see, I have my worthless press pass. You know, here at the InfoWars, we rarely get credentialed, but we said, hey, Obama's going to be here, so let's get credentialed and try to get in. Out of the people in my organization, I was the only person who was approved, and when I found out, I came here this morning uh, ready to get in line to see Obama got here two hours early to get in line for it, and they told me that I can't go in because I don't have the right press pass. I was like, what's what's the difference of press pass? I was talking to the uh, to the staff here, and they said, well, the Secret Service approved the people who are actually going to go into the auditorium. So Secret Service approved media, you can see behind me getting their pat-downs and so forth. Uh, I was not approved, so I will not be able to go into the into the uh, LBJ Museum. Uh, a man who did not help the USS Liberty actually took help away from the USS Liberty and also the Gulf of Tonkin incidents as well as many other things. Kit Daniels, our writer at InfoWars.com, is here as well and we'll get his take on the, on the situation. Last night I came up here and I talked to a photojournalist who has been in the business for several years and he told me that the access, the press access here was the worst he's ever seen it. He could only get at most uh, 200 yards away from uh, Bill Clinton to take photography. Well, you stand over here on this side, they just don't want you to have any kind of line of sight. Oh, they don't want what? Line of sight, you can't see him. Oh. Meaning that the photos he took were not <laughs> very uh, reasonable at all at that distance. So, and this uh, also uh, brings to mind what the White House AP staff said earlier this year when they admitted that they were losing access to the president as, an, uh, as a media organization. Now, as you can see, some of the media appears to be too timid to even come near the barricades. What's going on? Uh, well, uh, I was informed by one of your officers that I can't be filming on this side of the street. Uh, we're not anywhere near a secure area that I'm aware of. Uh, we're just asking you to go to that side of the street. Right. Uh, you know, so I'm not trying to be difficult, sir, but you know, we can obviously get you know better footage on this side of the street if we're filming this location. Just please, um, please abide by what we're telling you to do. Yes, sir. All right, all right, but sir, I can't be in What's this up, area man? with my uh, with my press pass, you correct? <laughs> no, you can't. Yes. Because you're properly credentialed. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so I have no problem on this side of the street. What are you doing with your stuff Just not continuously. Not continuous. Right. Okay. All right, not continuous. All right, not continuous first amendment. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. I come back to this can stand in the street, but the press is not allowed to. What's the difference? Secret Service calls Secret. makes the calls. So Secret Service allowed the activists to okay. come back up for Secret Service. Sit in the street. All right, since getting here earlier this morning, we have been able, at least I have been able with my uh, press pass, been able to get a little closer to the scene. I was up up here uh, closer to the LBJ but still not able to get in and a uh, kit was not uh, anointed by the by the Secret Service so he could get nowhere near it but we got a little bit closer since then we've had a very strong police presence it's probably every bike cop in the city of Austin has shown up uh, we have those shots of them coming in also we got guys walking around with shotguns out here snipers on the roofs it's a it's a whole big deal as you can see from the footage the security theater here was meant one of the primary objectives of it was to protect President Obama's image you saw that activists were able to sit in the street for well over 10 minutes, but the police, under orders by Secret Service, would push press out of the street so they couldn't even take photographs. This is Kit Daniels and Jakari Jackson reporting for InfoWars.com.
Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread.